Okay, I'm still up here at the blue wall, and it is evening. And for a lot of us where a lot of things aren't second nature on how to program something like the smart shunt, um, which is, as you can see, blinking there in the background between these two devices. So I really need to mention this comment from Matt, who is always giving us fantastic information. So I was just trying to go down and uh, get out of here, but then I started reading his comment on how to set this smart shunt. And I'll read through what is over here, and while I'm doing that, I will show you what I'm doing, because uh, he obviously knows exactly what he's talking about, and a lot of these uh, terminologies and things on the shunt, I'm not extremely familiar with. So let's go into the, the smart shunt. And I have gone and set all of the values he has said to do. So first of all, I'm going to go up here to I'll move this out just a little bit more here and see if I can. There we go. Get that a little bit better there. So I'll read to you what he said and show you what I did because this is great information. Uh, the only thing I haven't figured out is how to get that off of 100% charge, and I'm sure that that will change eventually. So first I went into settings on the smart shunt. Move this up just a little bit more for you guys. Okay, so then I'm gonna click the battery. And we know that the battery is uh, a 200 amp hour. It's two 100s tied in parallel. And, okay, so now I'm just going to read to you what he says. And he says, the amp hour set to full capacity of battery as appropriate. So that's 200 amp hours. Next, and he goes right down the line for us. And I mean... Thanks a lot, Matt, for just taking the time and spelling this out. Then he says, on charged voltage, 13.8 for reset to 100%. And then he says he'll explain this more down below. So I've set that to 13.8, as you can see. And I'm, I know he knows what he's talking about, so I'm doing exactly what he says. And it should help some of you guys, too, that maybe you haven't figured out all of these values on the smart shunt. Next, he says the discharge floor should be set at 10%, typically. So I did change that. I don't remember now what all of these were set at. I was playing around with it, seeing if I could get that to jump off of 100%. And then I said, oh, Matt left me the comment the other night of what exactly what I need to do. <clears throat> okay, so moving on to tail current. Tail current, 2% typically used as part of the logic the unit uses to reset the state of charge to 100%. So I've set that to 2%. And then next is charge detection time. And he says three minutes used as part of the same logic. Okay, I believe that. <laughs> and the Pukert exponent, he says 1.05. For lithium iron phosphate, be sure to set this parameter properly to 1.05. It was not on there, and I have reset that uh, per his suggestion. Uh, charge efficiency factor, 99%. This is amp hours in versus amp hours out. Not enough energy in versus energy out, so it is 99%. For lithium, lithium has almost perfect columbic, columbic efficiency. Okay, so some of these words I'm not real familiar with, but I believe him. Uh, so I did exactly what he said there as well, 1.05. Charge efficiency factor, 99%. I already said that. <laughs> okay, and current threshold, 0, 0 0.1 amps. And... Time to go averaging period, five minutes is typical, set as you like. This is for display purposes only. So I've got it at three minutes. I'm going to do what he says there, 
and bump that up to five minutes and press OK. I'm going to do it exactly as he says. Okay, uh, battery state of charge, or I mean battery state of charge on reset. He says set to 100% setting, set to 100% setting. So let's see if I can, right there, set to 100% setting, okay. <clears throat> So I, I didn't, I thought I'd done everything he said, but that one I didn't do. So, uh, state of charge. He says you can charge the state of charge upon initial connect if you know what it is. Otherwise, it will fix itself after a full cycle anyway. So I'm guessing that tomorrow, uh, you know, if it gets up to a nice full charge and everything, it'll, it'll reset it. That's what I wasn't quite understanding why it was still showing 100%. So... I did like he said, set to 100%. Uh, state of charge now says 99.6%. And I'll read that again. You can change the state of charge upon initial connect if you know what it is, which it was about, a, it was pretty much 100% when I hooked this up, but then I played around with a lot of these things and I'm not sure exactly what I did. <laughs> so. <clears throat> Otherwise, like he says, it will fix itself after a full cycle anyway. So I'm not going to worry about that. I'll assume that once it goes back up to full charge again, everything will be good. And then this value will start to change a little bit. Because right now, uh, it's definitely not. I mean, it's a very full bank, but it's not probably 100% now. Okay, so then he says on miscellaneous settings. And it took me a minute to find that. But if you get out of these battery settings and go, there is a miscellaneous settings right here. And he says, miscellaneous settings, battery mode, battery monitor. So monitor mode, battery monitor in monitor mode, monitor mode. Battery monitor. Okay. So that's what we want. And that's what we've got. And auxiliary input. Set to none if not using the auxiliary port. And I'm not using the auxiliary port, so it is set to none. Okay. And then he says in terms of the charged voltage for a 12-volt battery, 13.8 volts is well into the exponential part of the charge curve. So you usually want to achieve the shunt's reset state of charge to 100%. Logic starting about there. Okay, I might have to read that again. In terms of the charged voltage for a 12 volt battery, 13.8 is well into the exponential part of the charge curve, so you usually wanna activate the shunt's reset to state of charge to 100%. Okay, so when it gets up to about 13.8 uh, at some point tomorrow, hopefully, then I can reset the state of charge to 100% because now I understand what he's saying. It's basically a full battery. Um, call it 100% after that. The shunt will also wait for the tail current to drop to 2% and wait three minutes after those parameters are all satisfied before resetting the state of charge to 100%. Okay, very good. Uh, the Victron documentation that suggests setting charge voltage to the float voltage is incorrect for lithium iron phosphate. That's great to know, and thanks for that. Also keep in mind that the current and power on the shunt status screen is the current and power going into or out of the battery, not the current and power coming from the solar. That's also good to know. Some of this I'm going to reread again tomorrow while I'm watching the system charge up. And then he continues, the loads on the system will subtract a bit from the current and power from the solar during the day, leaving you with just the current and power the battery is being charged or discharged with. So I think I've got everything set up the way he, he has said now. So I, as you can see, I've just been reading it word for word what he wrote and... Um, 
you know, this is going to help a lot of us. I mean, it, it helped me incredibly just to go step by step right down. I mean, he read it right down exactly what you see when you go into the app uh, as step one, step two, step three, all of that. So uh, I'll finish up just reading his comment. And he says, uh, the loads on the system will subtract a bit from the current and power from the solar during the day, leaving you with just the current and power. The battery is being charged or discharged at night. Of course, the discharge rate will be precisely what the loads are using since there won't be any solar active. Oh yeah. And when you have the shunt connected to the same VE smart network as the charge controller, the charge controller will use the voltage reading from the shunt instead of its own voltage reading and thus get a more accurate voltage reading for the battery. So I did create a network uh, for all of these uh, devices and called it the Bungaloha, of course. So, and then he said, uh, finishing up that last sentence, uh, instead of its own voltage reading and thus get a more accurate voltage for reading the battery, which is awesome. And that is awesome. Uh, choose the 800 VA Phoenix was a good call. The smaller the capacity of the inverter, the less vampire power it eats. Though, since you aren't running a fridge, and no, I am not, <clears throat> he he questioned, you might be able to use the eco mode in the Bungaloha. I've never been able to use the eco mode on his Phoenix himself. So, and that was another setting that I did go back and see when I was showed you on that last video that, uh, you know, I went up there and, uh, clicked it into eco mode with these lights on and it you could see it pulse and the light would go on a minute then it go back off so when I went back uh, to the VE direct which is that <clears throat> dongle and I went to here and I found wake up power right here wake up power 100 like 100 watts, right? 100 VA. Um, so I know that I only was drawing based on the devices about uh, 12 to 20 watts, depending on what I was running. Right now I'm pulling, we can see 23. So right there, it was, it was set up as wake up power at 100. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this down to like, let's see what's the lowest it goes to. Well, it says zero, but then it looks like 10, 10 watts. So I'll kick it up to, what's the next one? 20. And let's see what that does. And now, assuming, since I am drawing 23, let me click this over onto eco mode real quick. So the lights will go out when I flip it off. And then I'm going to go to eco. And it sent the pulse out and the lights are staying on. So, oh, <laughs> now they're not. Okay, let me, it's showing searching. Let me go back and set that and see if I can get that. Oh, it went, it went back to 100. Let me do it to 10 and see what happens. Okay, now see if it stays on. Seems to be staying on. So I set it down for 10 watts at the wake up. The 20, I guess it wasn't going to kick on, but there it is at set at 10 and the lights are staying on. So that's an eco mode now. So that's really good. So assuming that uh, it takes both those lights to kick that on in eco mode, let me flick this one off and see what happens. Dropping it down to 13 is what it shows. Yeah, it's staying in eco, or it's, the light is still staying on. Well, Matt will straighten us up. <laughs> Matt, thanks a lot. You've helped, uh, you've helped me tremendously. You always do. 
Uh, all you guys just rock with your great information. There's so many of you out there. And that one was really just, you know, fantastic. I mean, straight down the line, he, he walked us right through everything that needs to be. So, source of great information, as many of you are. All right. Had to show you guys that. I'll keep playing around with this. There's lots for me to learn yet, and I'll get uh, better with my nomenclature on some of this stuff, but I'm learning a lot, and it's only been up for a few hours. All right. Aloha.